How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. So we are up at the logging company and I wanted to show you guys what we sort of did in the end. So I've been putting quite a bit of work into this new area and I think it's pretty much done now. So what I did is I put the big John Deere crane in the middle which means we can put a trailer on each side and then sort of load in between them. But there's also quite a bit of space behind it. So you can come in from the road in that side and sort of go around and then park in there with any of the trailers without having to reverse anything because, well, the big trailer's okay. Um, but the other ones are going to be a bit difficult to reverse. And then over here we have all of the equipment just sort of lined up. So that is where they'll have to stay. We didn't actually have to take out those two trees, at least for now. Uh, we'll keep them there. And I do have the pickup with the gooseneck over here because we're actually picking up the Veltra uh, that is going down to clever motors they are going to be fitting that front loader for us unfortunately it sounds like they're going to have to take all of the protective gear off to actually make that thing fit so yeah less than ideal but it sort of is what it is um we'll see they'll they'll have a good look at it and see what they what they can do but yeah it doesn't sound good at this point but anyway as long as it's functional i don't really care and then over this side i am um, well obviously we're not going to be using this space anymore so what i did is i got some wild grass seed and just spread it out there sort of by hand and it's sort of taken in places but yeah it really hasn't done very well the thing is this area is extremely compacted so the grass doesn't really take on it at all. So I thought about maybe even bringing in like a plow and loosening everything up for the grass to grow back a little bit easier. But I don't know. It seems like a lot of work to get a bit of grass in here. And I think eventually it will sort of recover. Um, I think once we get like a few dandelions and stuff in here, it'll start loosening up the soil. They're pretty good at doing that. So yeah, I'm kind of actually hoping for a bit of dandelions and things to help out this situation but yeah i don't know i'm not going to worry about it too much i'm not going to make a, a huge fuss and have too much effort spent in here to to make this look all natural again it'll sort of do its own thing over time but yeah it, it's basically like concrete this so which is understandable but yeah i kind of like our operation over there i think it's a lot more practical than what they had over here although i don't actually know what the layout was that they used over here i think everything was just sort of packed away when we saw this place for the first time because it was of course put on hold so the way that we found it, i don't think is a way that it was actually used when they were operational but yeah i don't know it's just a big slope over here i don't know what sort of what, what was the reason um to to have it over here but anyway i think it is much better over there so what we're gonna do is we are gonna get the Valtra going and we'll load it up. I thought it would just be easier to um, to get it on the trailer rather than driving it down there because it's quite far for me to get up here. So I sort of have to take a taxi or try and catch a lift. Um, and yeah, it, it's just frustrating and time consuming. So I thought I'll just bring the pickup with the trailer. And hopefully this thing fits because this is a pretty big tractor to be fair. Let's see. But yeah, we'll take this to Clever Motors. We could actually do with um, giving this thing a wash as well, but we'll do that when we get it back. Maybe they'll be nice enough to give it a wash for us when they're sort of done with it. That should do. Uh, yeah, that fits okay. Not too bad at all. Well, I got a little bit off center, but should be absolutely fine. So, yeah, we're going to take that in, and I don't know how long it's going to take for them to actually do all of that, but they did say they have the parts in for it. So, yeah, we're going to take it down there. I'm going to get the whole thing strapped down, and we'll drop it off, and I'll see you guys on our way back to the farm, because we have got a bit of harvesting to do. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, well, I got the Veltra dropped off, and they're not actually open yet. There's no one there. So either they're late, or they're only open at 9. Maybe they changed the opening hours, or I'm just confused. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't really matter. I got it dropped off, and when they come in, they'll know what it's all about. 
but I'll give them a ring later on just to make sure everything's fine. But we are going to start getting everything ready for harvest. I'm very excited to get into harvest today. And I'm hoping that we can actually harvest both of our fields. Before we get into that though, there's two things that I wanted to talk about real quick. Firstly, I found out that everything that Michael owned is going up for auction today. Now this includes all of the properties, all of the equipment, and also all of the equipment that they couldn't find the original owners of. Now it's an online auction and it hasn't opened yet but you can preview it so i had a quick look this morning and there's one piece of equipment in particular that i'm quite interested in which is an old john deere square baler so i'm going to keep a close eye on that and if it goes for a good price i'll throw a bit in there and see if we can maybe win that but we'll have to see what it goes for Something else that I noticed, which was quite interesting, was in the property section. Two of the properties that came up was actually this one and the one sitting next to it. Now, I found that interesting because, well, I didn't know that Michael owned these two fields. Thing is, this field has been sitting like this for, well, forever. The field next to it, though, has been farmed. In fact, there's actually a really good looking crop sitting on it at the moment, which seems to be just about ready to harvest now i know what michael's equipment looks like and he did not farm that so my guess is he had someone that was leasing that off of him and farming it now the thing is all of this property was seized so they probably weren't actually actively farming that for a while what i'm quite interested to know which we'll probably never find out but with a crop sitting on it at the moment, will they be allowed to come in and actually harvest that before the new owner takes ownership? Or is the new owner basically just going to, well, get a bargain of a lifetime and buy a property probably pretty cheaply on auction and it has a full crop on it as well? I don't know. That would be a pretty bad situation for whoever was leasing that um if that happened but i kind of think that's probably what will happen unfortunately we are not in a position to buy any property at the moment we just spent four hundred thousand dollars on a logging company it would have been cool though to buy those two fields and make this all one big farm but firstly we yeah we we don't have the means to do that we don't have the money and there's no way we're getting another uh, loan but also, we don't have the equipment to cope with that amount of land. What we've got already is pretty hard to cope with with what we've got. But yeah, it would have been cool. But anyway, that's not going to happen. Anyway, second thing I wanted to talk about is our little John Deere 710 over here. Unfortunately, this thing is absolute junk. I tried to get it going and the engine is locked up. And when I say locked up, I mean welded. This thing is just done. I got Zach over to check as well, and he just went, yeah, no, that, that ain't happening. So, unfortunately, that's $3,000 down the drain. And I, I don't even know if we'll be able to get, like, a, a replacement engine for it. It'll probably cost more than what the thing's worth. I kind of feel like the guy probably knew exactly what was wrong with it when he sold it to us, but it was my fault. I didn't even try to crank it when we were over there. And, yeah lesson learned i guess but i i think it's just one of those you win some you lose some deals but i don't know at least it's nice to look at so i put it in the corner here but i thought what we'll do is we'll we'll get it washed up we definitely won't do any work to it but we'll get it cleaned up and washed up and all and we might put it out front with the other little tractor and yeah we we basically bought a three thousand dollar ornament there but anyway it is what it is nothing we can do about it now but yeah anyway we are gonna head over to the farmyard we have to get the front loader off of the Massey we're gonna get that hooked up to the trailer then I want to check out the combine real quick and make sure everything's good to go on that just give it a nice quick once over and then we're gonna jump into the fields and get harvesting going so we'll start on the small field get everything nice and dialed in over there before we head into the big field so yeah 
I'm gonna get all of that done and we're gonna get straight into harvesting then so we're gonna jump into a real quick time lapse and we're gonna get that knocked out so for now sit back relax and enjoy Baby, I've been hearing, been hearing stories about where you're from and what you want to show me. Let's make it happen. And I'm talking now because I can't waste another day. Not knowing what you're about. I want to meet your mother. want to know your partner. Right, well, harvesting is going pretty well. It's um, not bad at all, and the yield seems to be pretty decent. So we've got the first field done here, and I've just been moving the equipment over to the other field when I got a phone call from a guy that might be interested in one of the internationals. So he's on his way. We're going to meet him at the dealership and hopefully fingers crossed he buys one of them i'm not sure which one is interested in but we'll see when he gets here but yeah i've i've actually been really enjoying the harvesting here this field here is obviously going to take a long time this is a pretty big field especially for the size of equipment that we're dealing with but we got almost a full trailer on that other field of the canola so i'm thinking it's somewhere in the region of about i don't know seven or eight thousand liters judging by where it was sitting in the trailer so not bad not bad at all i'm hoping we can get a few trailer loads out of this field though this is this is the money maker here hopefully but yeah we'll have to wait and see how that does if it yields as well as the other field um we'll we'll probably get maybe two or three trailers out of there I'm, I'm hoping at least three but i don't know it's hard to judge we'll have to see how it goes but yeah this guy's on his way so hopefully he buys one of them that'll be really really nice but we'll have to wait and see but anyway yeah i'm gonna wait for him and see yeah what what sort of happens with that and then after that we'll sort of jump into into this field here and try and get this all knocked out but yeah that's gonna be a pretty big job but anyway i'm gonna wait for this guy and i'll see you guys in a little bit all right well he just left and unfortunately he didn't buy anything so he seemed to show a little bit of interest in the smaller international but eventually it just said, I'll think about it, and he left. So, yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. You're not going to get all of them, but I'm just a little bit annoyed by the fact that we've actually got loads to do today, and I just wasted an hour on a tire kicker. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But anyway, it happens. It's just one of those things. And, um, yeah, we'll just try and make that time up again. So we're going to get straight back into things. And we'll get the drone back out and we'll jump into a quick time lapse. We'll probably do, I would say, probably a headland twice round on this field just to give ourselves a bit of space um, to, to move. We might actually even go around three times. I don't know. I'll see, I'll see how it goes. But yeah, we're going to jump into that time lapse and we're going to get this field knocked out so for now sit back relax and enjoy i'll be your chase it down tough it out sideline when there's no crowd all the roots in your ground i'll be your wrecking ball brick wall glass of wine or whiskey strong the good wind is gone I lay next to you, lay it up, I 
job done and that was extremely enjoyable but unfortunately the yield on that was really really low in fact we only got about one and a half trailers not even one and a half trailers off of this field and by my calculations we got maybe a little bit over 20,000 liters of canola off of our two fields combined which might sound like a lot, but if you look at today's prices for canola, which really isn't a bad price, we would make, if we sold all of it right now, we would make $13,000. Which really isn't a lot. And I had a look at the prices for the last year, and if we sold at the very highest price that it was in the last year, we would have made $16,000. So, I just don't think it's worth it. I think our operation is just too small for arable. I love doing arable, but honestly, I, I just don't think it's worth it anymore. We're not making money. I mean, it's taking so much time and so much effort, and... It's just not giving anything back. I mean, that is somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars of income off of these two fields for the entire year. We just we can't do that. So I'm thinking a major change of plans here. I'm thinking get these fields turned around and get all of the rocks out of them and then seed both of them with grass because we've already got the other two grass fields up there now which are actually ready for their first cut so we'll be doing that very soon but the thing is if we invest a little bit of money into a bit more equipment we could get some really 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 good cuts off of the four fields if we take good care of them and we could then bail it up wrap it let it ferment and sell it off as silage because silage is worth a lot of money in these parts and we can get multiple cuts off of all of the fields in one season we could possibly even get about three cuts in one season off of all of the fields and i genuinely think we can make a lot more money off of these fields compared to what we're getting now. And it also means that we'll have a lot more feed available for the sheep. So we can up the numbers there and hopefully make a bit more money on the wool. But yeah, I don't know. The, the numbers just don't add up. And while I was in the combine, I actually kept a close eye on the baler that came up on auction and i put in a few bids on it and eventually won it on eight thousand dollars which i think was a really good price so that will be delivered tomorrow i'm really looking forward to that which means we have got a really good mower it's sort of one of those old but gold mowers we don't need a rower because the mower already does that we've got hopefully a good square baler now so all we really need is 
a square bale wrapper. Now, I do know that square bale wrappers in particular are also very expensive. But I'm going to have a look out and see if I can find anything anywhere. Even if I have to arrange transport, I'll do that if we can get it at a decent price. So, I mean, if we've got that, then, then we're in business. Because we've already got, like I say, a first cut on two fields sitting up there. And, I mean, we can, we can grab a few bales for feed and stock them away for the sheep. And the rest we can basically wrap, put away, let it ferment and um, sell it off as silage in in a little while i'm not 100 percent sure how long it'll take but i'll have to look into all of that but i just personally think we can make so much more money off of doing that i'd say it's it's sad because i i love doing arable i'll keep the equipment for now i won't sell the combine or anything like that just in case we want to sort of fall back onto onto arable again but um yeah i think for the moment the numbers just don't add up and it's not worth it but yeah, it sort of is what it is. But yeah, we've got a baler coming, so that's good. Unfortunately, money-wise, we're not doing great. We're sitting on 13000 and I still don't know what the Veltra is going to cost us. That is going to be dependent on labor. If they have to take that cage off, it's going to get expensive. So yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that. And we're going to have to find some sort of a wrapper for a really good price or make money somewhere. I was really hoping on a sale on that international today but unfortunately that didn't happen that would have helped out a lot but yeah it kind of is what it is we'll figure it out and we'll we'll get money from somewhere and yeah we'll take it from there but we are gonna leave it there for today guys so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to give me a thumbs up and i'll see you all next time